We ask them a series of questions. Where do they work? How long have they been? We ask them if they have an IRA or a 401k. We ask them because they can borrow money from their IRA at 1% interest for down payment on a house. Wouldn't that be a beautiful day? 30 grand, 50 grand from their retirement account that they can borrow and use to give to you. So there's lots of different reasons that we ask the questions that we ask. Now, how many of you landlords, by a show of hands, have ever had somebody set up an appointment and not show up for the appointment? Oh my goodness. Well, let's, let's do things a different way. Here's what we do. We have a lockbox screwed to the wall, <laughs> basically in the door frame on the property. When they go to the property, we say, well, why don't you go ahead, Kathy, and drive the neighborhood. I've got this one property I want you to take a look at. Drive the neighborhood, see the school, see what, if you like it. If you like it, give me a call. I might be able to get you in right away. So Kathy goes, oh, Mr. Brown, I love it. Oh, great, Kathy. Okay, I need you to walk with me, if you will, up to the front door. All right, I need you to punch in the following numbers. Open that up, take that key out, unlock the door, put it right back in there, lock it back up, and Kathy, make sure that you lock the door on the way out. Now, I'd love to stay on the phone with you as you walk through the property. If you'd like me to, if not, just give me a call back before you leave. Are you with me now? All right, so Kathy goes through that. See, I found out I don't have to go to the bathroom and say, here's a bathroom. I found out I don't have to go to the kitchen and say, here's a kitchen. <laughs> I figured out they actually could figure that out for themselves. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they walk through the property, and then and we, we say you've got to make three promises. Promise not to use the bathroom because we don't have the water on. Promise not to, uh, if you unlock it, lock it. If you open it, close it, and don't use the bathroom. Okay, so they make those promises, and then they go in, look at the property. I'm going to teach you all this stuff. It's on the CDs. And then when they go to the kitchen, uh, or excuse me, let's say they call you back when they're leaving. What did you think of the property, Kathy? Oh, Mr. Brown, I love it. Oh, great. Kathy, if you would, walk right into that kitchen and the sink to the right of the, of the uh, or the drawer to the sink, the drawer to the right of the kitchen sink. I need you to open that drawer and in there is the application. I need you to take one for each person 18 years of older. You told me that there was five people moving into the property, yourself and your three kids. What age are they? Okay, you do have a 19-year-old. All right, I need you to get three applications. Kathleen, there is an application fee. It's $35 for individuals, $50 for a married couple. So that would be you, your husband, and your son. So that would be $85. I need you to get that filled out this afternoon, and I need you to meet me close to my house. No, I I didn't say that. <laughs> I need you to drive across town because I'm working on a project. All right? So, <laughs> so we're going to meet you. Uh, and then when you're about five minutes from the Waffle House. See, you already know where you're going to meet. It's about five minutes from your house. All right? The Waffle House. All right? So we have a set. Say, when you're about five minutes from the Waffle House, give me a call. You see, we have a rule, and it's called... Smell the money. Right. If you can't smell the money through the phone. <sighs> then the key does not go in the ignition. <laughs> the key stays at home. The body stays at home. The car stays at home. Everything stays home. Are you with me now? All right, so Kathy calls. She's about five minutes. Oh, yeah, let's go. Boom. Jump in the car. Run over there get the applications. Now you screen the applications. Oh, by the way, she doesn't just sign that. She's also going to sign an application receipt agreement. Now, landlords, by a show of hands, how many of you have ever had somebody not move into your property after you've already gone through the pain and suffering of approving them? Of course. So what we do is they sign... And we tell them another thing. Oh, Kathy, by the way, when you're coming over with the applications and the application fees, we'll be getting a lot of calls on this property. We've found that people really 
are best off if they go ahead and give us a reservation fee. The reservation fee is equivalent to the move-in fee, and that's about $1,000 on this property, so you bring the application fee and the reservation fee. We'd be more than happy to jump on your application, and that will serve as your reservation fee. We'll process your application first before any others because it has the reservation fee attached to it. So bring that with you when you bring the applications. Are you with me so far? Yeah. Now, Kathy signs a, reserve, a, a receipt for the application. So we get the application, she signs a receipt, and in this receipt, we identify the reservation fee and we identify the rental amount that they're paying. She signs, gives us a social security number, then we compare that to the application we already got to see if it's different than the one we already got. <laughs> And then we sign the receipt down here at the bottom and give them a copy of this agreement. Is that a good thing? Yes. You see, because in this agreement it also says that if we approve them and later for any reason they don't move in, they forfeited their reservation fee. Is that a good thing? Yes. yes, because you have turned other people away. You may have stopped advertising. There's a lot of things you may have done once you approve those people. So now we've got them locked in. If they back out, which does happen, we and we definitely have it, had it happen multiple times, we kept the money because that was our agreement. Is that a contract? You better believe it's a contract. They contracted to take the property if you approved them. They didn't take the property. You approved them. No refunds. Now what we have had, and this has happened to us about three times, we've had people come back to us later. We've had them come back and say, you know, you treated us right. We didn't treat you right. We're back. We want your path to home ownership program. Is that a good thing? Mm -hmm. See? So they, you, you don't break a relationship with them because that's what they agreed to. Now, how many of you like this so far? You like this so far? Yeah. I'm not done yet. Now, we, we have an evaluation worksheet. There is a fair housing law in this country. you got to make sure you do things by the rules. Okay? So the rules are we treat everyone equally. Regardless, the Quibanese, we don't care. Everybody's treated the same. So everybody gets the, a score based on the answers that we get from their current employer, their previous employer, their current landlord, their previous landlord, credit report, all those things earn a score. Is that a good plan? Yeah. So everybody gets scored equally. Now, what's the scoring criteria? We've got it all broken down for you. All of this is in volume two. So when you get the application, score them with the criteria and that gives you everything that you need. Now let's get into the standard rental agreement loaded with profit centers and protection. Now how we've designed this agreement is that we write the rent for an amount higher than we want. You like that program? <laughs> so let's say that the rent's going to be $1,000 a month. We're going to write our rental agreement for $1,100 a month. And then we're going to give them a discount for prompt payment and minor maintenance. Is that a good thing? So they earn or are paid for timely payment and minor maintenance. It's pay. It's a pay for the discount. So in this first section, you'll be writing the higher amount and then you'll be giving them a discount. Now, how many of you are afraid to raise the rent of your tenants, afraid that they're going to move if you raise the rent? Well, what about this? We've already got it built in. We tell, tell them. Now, here's how this works. So let's say that we call up Kathy and we say, Kathy, good news, you've been approved. Now, remember where we just met uh, yesterday and got the applications? All right, we need to meet at exactly the same place. And when you're about five minutes from the Waffle House, give us a call. And then the key goes back in the ignition and we race over there with our rental agreement this time. We've already got the application, now we're getting the rental agreement, and we bring enough for everybody. Now, Kathy, here's how this works. I need you to have, I need at least an hour of your time. I'd love for you to get a babysitter for your kids because I need your undivided attention. I need you, your husband, and your 19-year-old son to be present at the meeting because we're going to go through the documents. Now, what most landlords do, they meet somebody in a parking lot, <laughs> 
meet them on the, the back trunk of the car, flip it over to the last page, sign off, and the tenants don't know what they signed. Is that right? right? They don't have any idea what they agreed to. We have a different thing. Remember I said, train your tenants from the beginning. We This is our training opportunity. They seem this to forget. Our, pardon? They seem to forget. They definitely forget. <laughs> but we're going to go through it so they can remember that we met and we went through <laughs> this agreement. And then we're going to sit down together and I'm going to give them a copy already filled out and then we're going to read it to them. I don't have any guarantee they can read. <laughs> but I'm going to stop along the way and emphasize certain points. Is that a good plan? Yes. And in fact, when we're emphasizing things, certain paragraphs, they even have to initial that paragraph. So they can't quite forget, all right, that they didn't understand that paragraph because there's some very important things in our paragraphs that are very powerful because we collect our rents not on the first of the month. 25th. We collect our rents when, Jim? On the 25th. Yeah. 25th of the month, baby. It's Christmas. a beautiful thing. <laughs> it, that's, that's payday. <laughs> that's payday. 